Here with this photograph, I want to take a look at how we can use some of the new features with the patch tool and also eventually how we can use the content aware move tool in order to make some changes to this photograph. Well, first let's take a look at how we would use the patch tool traditionally. Traditionally, what we would need to do would be to select the patch tool. You can do so by clicking on one of the healing tools and then selecting patch. And to use this tool in a way that we have traditionally in previous versions of Photoshop, we would select normal. And in this case, I'm going to use source. In order to use the patch tool in this way, we need to have a layer. So here we can see we can have the duplicate layer. And what I want to do is try to retouch out some of these trees. I want to remove some of them, say because this image is going to be used for an ad and we need to clean up this area. Well, to do that with the patch tool, we could simply click and drag around an area of our photograph, say this here, and then go ahead and drag to a new clean area and then let go. Yet when I do this, the results, they don't really look that good because we have all of this bleeding in of those edges. It looks smudgy and just kind of strange. But still, I could try to continue to work with this. The next step, of course, would be to make another patch selection. I'll try selecting these trees over here and then dragging this over to a nice clean area of the photograph. Well, here you can see that the patch tool, it allowed me to work with a large area, but the results just didn't really work for me. Well, let's compare this to the new feature which we have in this tool. This new feature allows us to work on a separate layer. The advantage of this is that it's going to increase our file by less size. In other words, it's going to take up less space. And this is definitely important when it comes to retouching or cleaning up, especially high resolution files. So let's click on the new layer icon to create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and name this patch dash new. Next, with the patch tool selected, Let's go to this pull down menu and this time choose content aware. You'll notice that we have different options, adaptation options, as well as the ability to sample all layers. So what this means for us is that we can then make a selection. Again, let's make a similar selection to what we did before. And we can use this patch tool in a similar way, but it's going to give us different results. Here you can see the results while they're much cleaner. Let me go ahead and work on this area of the photograph and then bring these down to this nice area of snow here and then let go of that. And again, the results are significantly different. And even after the fact, you can modify the adaptation. If you want something that's really loose, that just makes it look good, well, you can choose that option. If you have content that you don't want to have change in any way, shape, or form, well, the adaptation you choose is very strict. Well, here for this image, very loose works well because it's just snow and we don't really need this to look right proportionally. Now, of course, there are some other areas I might want to clean up or work on, especially these little edges over here. But the difference is really quite stunning. Let's compare those two. If we turn this off, you can see patch tool without content aware and then now patch tool with content aware. So this allows us to remove large areas and it pays attention to the surrounding areas and really tries to blend it all in together. And so by using this tool in this way, not only does it work better in situations like this, but also it's just applying this to one area of a layer. In other words, if I turn off the visibility of my background layer, well, this is all that I've done. These are all the pixels that I've added to my image rather than having to add an entire layer, which would increase the file size significantly I just have this small little area which I have cleaned up and patched and healed right here using that tool. So as you can imagine using this tool, well, it can really help you out. Let's say, for example, we want to do something else like remove this tree. Again, just make a rough selection around that area. And you want to try to select an area which has similar tonality and texture that will then bring that into this area. And in this case, that looks really good. It helped us deal with those situations. Well, let's continue to work with this image. And in the next movie, let's take a look at how we can also use another new tool. This new tool allows us to move content from one location of our frame to another. Here we're going to be working on a few different images in order to understand a brand new tool. It's called the Content Aware Move Tool. 
this tool is really powerful. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can work with this tool. You'll find this in the same area as your other healing tools. If you click on your patch tool, which we used previously, you can go down to select the Content Aware Move tool. And you know it's important to note that this tool is located near these other tools. And the reason is, is because sometimes you're going to use this tool and it's going to work perfectly by itself. In other situations, you're going to need to use this tool in combination with some of your other retouching or healing tools. Well, let's go ahead and select the tool. Next, let's take a look at the options bar. Well, here we have the ability to choose two different modes. We can either move or extend content. Well, here what I want to do is move content. I want to move this subject over to the right a little bit because this image is going to be used for an ad and they need some space for copy in this area. We also have the ability to choose different adaptation styles. If we choose very strict, what that means is we want the content to stay the same. Because I'm going to be moving a person, this is paramount that I choose this option. Next, we have the ability to sample all layers. And this is great because it allows us to make this move on a new layer. Well, let's go ahead and create the new layer. We'll do so by clicking on the new layer icon. I'll double click the layer name and name this hiker. The next step is going to be to use this tool and just to make a rough selection around the subject. And this tool, well, it works really well when we're working with subjects which are in a pretty similar environment. In other words, we have all of this white snow here. So I can then simply click and drag and then drop the subject into a new location in order to move it. And what it did here was something fascinating. Let's deconstruct what happened. So here I'm going to deselect. To do so, press Command or Control D. Next, I'm going to turn off the visibility of my other layers for a moment so we can focus in on this layer. Well, what you can see here, if we zoom in a little bit, is that it took this shape and it not only moved the subject into this area, but it analyzed the surrounding area and then it built this shape here, which then covered up the hiker in the background layer. So if we turn off the visibility of this layer, well, the hiker is still there. He still exists in this location. It's just on this new layer that he's then been moved and also that this area has been patched over. And as I mentioned previously, sometimes this tool, well, it's like a miracle worker. It works incredibly well when you have these textures or these areas that are pretty similar. Yet in other situations, it doesn't work so well. Let's take a look at one of those scenarios. In order to do that, I'm going to click on this tab here for this file, Annika.jpg. This is a photograph that one of my friends captured of myself and my oldest daughter. I was tossing her up in the air down at the beach and we were having a lot of fun. And what I want to do is I want to make it look like she's higher in this frame, like I was throwing her even higher in the air. Well, we may think that we'll use the same strategy as before. We'll create a new layer. We'll go ahead and click on the new layer icon. We'll use our tool in order to make a generous selection around the subject. And then all that we need to do is to use that adaptation mode of very strict because it's a person, sample all layers, and then click and drag up. And voila, we will be done. Well, it's actually not that easy. And let me explain why. Here I'm going to go ahead and deselect. Now this may be difficult to see on your monitor, but if you look up close, what you should see is that there's really this distinct difference between the brightness and the color of this area, let me zoom in even closer there, and of the actual background. So it's like she's glowing, there's this halo, it just didn't work for me. Well, what can we do in situations like this where, you know, it tried to do a good job but it just didn't bring that in in the right way? Well, in situations like that, what we're going to need to do is to take a couple of different steps in order to get this to look good. For example, one of the things that we could do is to create perhaps a new layer. I'll go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to double click this layer name and I'm going to name this remove because on this layer I'm going to remove the subject. And I'm going to remove the subject using a technique that we looked at previously which is using the patch tool. Content aware, very loose, sample all layers. Again, make a generous selection around the subject. We could also remove the subject different ways as well but just want to use this one because I showed that recently. I'll select this area over here and that will then remove the subject from this area. Now let's deselect. Choose select and then deselect or the shortcut. 
Well, now that we've done that, we kind of have this blank canvas, so to speak. This layer allowed us to remove the subject from the background. Well, on our layer that we used in order to move the subject, what we now need to do is some masking. So let's go ahead and double click this layer, name it Annika. Here, what I'm gonna do is choose one of my selection tools. I'll use the quick select tool. This allows me to drag across the image. So I'll go ahead and do that, drag across the image. Try to build up a nice selection of Annie here flying up in the air. Next thing I wanna do, of course, is to refine the selection a little bit. To do that, we'll go to Refine Edge. In the Refine Edge dialog, you wanna turn on Smart Radius. And then here, we'll increase that Smart Radius until we have a really good selection of her there in the air. Well, once you've created a nice selection of that, what I'm gonna do is click OK, and then I wanna turn this selection into a mask. Well, that's really easy to do. All that we need to do is to click on our mask icon. Well, now that I've done that, I can now use this particular version of the photograph. In other words, I can select the Move tool and I can reposition her in different areas because the background isn't a problem. And so in this case, I kind of had to use this multiple tiered approach. And the reason why I wanna highlight that here is because what you're gonna see is in a lot of demos, you tend to find the demo files where everything just works perfectly. Yet in real life, it just isn't like that. Yet that doesn't mean that this isn't a really effective tool. Rather, many times you're gonna need to combine this tool with your other healing and retouching tools. And then by doing that, well, it can help you come up with some really fun results like we have here of my daughter, Annika, flying way up in the air. In order to really understand how this content aware move tool works, what I want to do is show you a few more examples so that you can really understand the ins and the outs of working with this tool. Well, here you can see I have this photograph and this was captured in one of my other training courses, narrative photography. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to center the subject right in the middle of the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, in order to do that, one of the things that we might try to do is to make a good selection of the subject rather than a really rough selection. That isn't gonna work here because the background, well, it's too complicated. So here what we could do is start off with using one of our selection tools, the quick select tool. You can go ahead and click and drag across your image with this tool and it allows you to build up a pretty nice selection. If ever you get to a detail area, we'll just press the left bracket key to create a smaller brush and I'm gonna select the subject as well as this white line that he's standing on because what I wanna do is move him and also move that white line there. After you've made your selection, you of course wanna to go to Refine Edge. This allows you to turn up the Smart Radius amount and just get a nicer selection and increase the contrast a little bit as well. All right, well the next step is to click OK. So far, we have a good selection. Well, how about moving him now? Well, if we move him now, we're gonna have really big problems because the selection, it's too tight, it's too perfect. Let me show you what I mean. Here, I'll click on the new layer icon and I'll go ahead and name this one Move. Next, I'll select the Content Aware Move tool. Here, we're gonna use Move rather than Extend. Adaptation, let's use Very Strict and then Sample All Layers. I'll go ahead and click and drag and move him over to the right a little bit and then let go and see what happens. Again, what we're gonna discover is that it didn't really work. Do you see all of this ghosting or shadows around the edge? It didn't work because our selection was too tight and it was bringing back some of that original file that was right on the edge. So what we need to do is undo this. Press Command or Control Z. The next thing we wanna do is rather than have this perfect selection, we wanna to go to our select pull down menu, choose modify and then expand the selection. Depending on the resolution of the file, you might need to expand this five, 10, 15 or 20 pixels. And by making this edge a little bit bigger, what it can do for us is give us some breathing room so that this tool can work a little bit more effectively. Now, if it doesn't work the first time, just go back and rechange how big you modified that selection. 
Let's try this one out. Here I'll go ahead and move this over to the left, and then I'll zoom out a little bit so that we can evaluate the results. Now with something like this, it will never be perfect, yet this looks a lot better. Let's deselect by pressing Command or Control D, and then look at the results. Here's before, and then here's after. You can see how we move the subject and also the line over to the left. And as I evaluate this, in a lot of areas, especially on the left-hand side, it looks good. There are a few areas I would need to touch up, right here along the shoulder, a little bit along the head, and then also a little bit over here along the cuff on the left side of the jacket there. Yet those adjustments, they could be made using the healing brush or the clone stamp tool. We could zoom in and do our typical retouching workflow. Yet here, rather than do that, what I wanted to illustrate was that whole idea of how you can work with different type of selections in order to increase your odds of getting better results when working with this tool. Well, the last thing that I want to highlight here is how you work with adaptation. I'm going to go over to this yoga file. What I want to do is make a selection of this subject here and move the subject over in the frame. So once again, I'll create a new layer. I'll go ahead and make a rough selection, in this case, around the subject. And I can make a rough selection because the content in the background, well, it's pretty similar to where I'm going to be moving the subject. Make sure I'm using my mode, in this case, very strict. Sample all layers turned on. And I'll just click and drag this over here. Now, when I do this, we'll see how the results are. For the most part, they're OK. Yet one of the things that I'm noticing is that if we zoom in a little bit, well, there's a little bit of a problem area around this part of the shoe. Again, I could mask that off or correct that after the fact, but I really like how it brought the subject over into this environment. Yet that's because I chose very strict. If I change this, say, to very loose, let's compare the results. Notice how the subject changes. Also notice how all of a sudden we lost her bottom foot. And the reason is, is that when you use an adaptation amount of very loose, it's telling Photoshop, well, hey, you have some freedom. Kind of figure it out on your own and just make it look good. Well, this edge right here, it looks a lot better, yet the foot is gone. So I lost something really important. So we can change this after the fact. We can go back and say choose very strict, and that will then create a better version here. Well, after we've done that, we would need to manually correct this area ourselves. And that's really as simple as going to select and then deselect. And then what you could do is zoom in on this area of the picture, and you could create a mask and mask that away, or you could do any number of things. Here I'm going to go ahead and let's say that what I'll do is just click on the Add Layer Mask icon, grab my brush tool, painting it with black. I'll press the left bracket key to make this a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is just try to paint away some of this darker blue that we're seeing in the background, which was part of that wave that we can see there. And with this type of cleanup work, really it's just about your typical retouching workflow of getting in there and using all the detail tools that you have in order to get that to look good and to try to blend that in a little bit so it looks nice and natural and you can bring that in. And I think now, for the most part, it looks okay. It's not perfect, but it's good for demo purposes. And here we can see, here's our before and then now our after. And so what I wanted to illustrate with this movie was just how we can work with adaptation because I thought it would be remiss not to really illustrate that so that you can see how the adaptation that you use, it really depends upon the subject matter. If you were just trying to move, say, this texture to another area, well, by all means, use very loose. Yet if it's a person or if it's something that's recognizable and you need to maintain the shape, well, then you need to use very strict. Here we're going to take a look at how we can finish this image off using the Content Aware Move tool. And we'll explore how we can use this tool with both modes, Move and also Extend. And one of the things that happens a lot is that when you move a subject, you really focus in on that area. But every once in a while, you need to zoom out or step back. And here you'll discover, or as I've discovered here, I have a problem. I have the reflection in the wrong location. So let's fix that. We'll create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon. 
Then with the Content Aware Move tool, we'll just make a nice, healthy, generous selection around this area. And then this will be really simple. Just click and drag and move this over to this other spot here. Using the same settings as we used previously, this will then fix this issue. All right, well, that looks great. Let's deselect by going to Select and Deselect. The next thing that I want to do is I want to extend the canvas size. I want to have more of the picture. Let's say we need to do this for some reason for creating this image for a cover of a book or maybe for an advertisement, a publication. Well, first, let's extend the canvas. To do so, we'll go to our image pull down menu, then we'll select canvas size. This allows us to change the canvas size. We want to anchor it to the right and add more space to the left. I'll go ahead and change my width to about five and a half inches there and click OK. Now when I do that, we can see that we have all of this space over here. What I'm going to do next is make a selection using the marquee tool. Here I'll go ahead and select this part of the image. Next thing I'm going to do is grab the Content Aware Move tool. This time, rather than using the mode Move, here we'll use Extend. We want the adaptation. We'll try out Very Strict, see if that works, and sample all layers. Create a new layer and then simply click and drag and move this over. We'll see how far we can get with that, perhaps right there, and we'll see how this works. If it doesn't work perfectly, what you want to do is change the adaptation. Yet here, I think that looks pretty good. Let's deselect by pressing Command or Control D in order to deselect, and let's move in on this area of the photograph to take a look at the seam there. Well, again, I think this looks pretty good. We've extended the frame Next, we need to trim off the edge. To do that, you can go to your image pull down menu and there's an option for trim. This gives you the ability to define what you want to trim off. In this case, well, the top left pixel color, that white in the background. We'll go ahead and click OK and it will then trim the image. So as you can see, you can use this tool not only to move your subjects around, but you can also use it in those situations where you need to extend your overall image and extend or expand your canvas size.